Good evening, everyone. Governor Hochul has declared a statewide state of emergency as remnants of Hurricane Debbie caused severe flooding across the state. And on top of the flooding, we're also under a tornado watch in Herkimer County. Over 8,000 people are without power in Oneida County. That's NYSEG numbers and National Grid numbers combined, and over 4,000 in Herkimer County. Trees and wires are down around the viewing area. Best bet, just stay off the roads. Let crews get things cleaned up. We've seen trees come down on cars because of some of the winds that are out there. Let's get right over to Chief Meteorologist Bill Cardis. He's tracking it all on this alert day. Bill, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Jason. We've been dealing with heavy rain. We've been dealing with wind. We have that tornado watch, which has been dropped for most of the area. It's still in effect for Herkimer County, but the tornado danger looks to be off the table. What we are tracking here and for the rest of the evening, the winds. This is creating a big problem. We've been getting a lot of downed trees. We had a lot of wind damage earlier this summer, and you combine that with heavy rainfall, uh, 40 to 50 mile an hour winds uh, that take, took place over the past couple of hours. It's creating a lot of debris on the roads and some scattered power outages. So again, just be careful if you're heading out. The winds will be subsiding. I think this is about as strong as it gets. So we will get a break from the winds as we head into this evening as well as tonight. Rainfall totals, again, a soaking rain, but not a significant major rainfall. Uh, we had a couple of minor issues, some streams getting pretty high. But again, aside from a few minor uh, issues, most of this uh, uh, came through without a big problem. The Sequoia Creek getting pretty high. Uh, some minor flooding here, but again, the river levels are be going down. The one spot we are watching is the West Canada Creek. That's expected to uh, go over its flood banks at Cast Bridge as we head into tonight. But again, most of us are in better shape. Flash flood uh, warnings in our area have expired. The rain is continuing to move to the east. And again, things are going to be getting better as we go forward this evening. The rain showers come to an end. The winds will be subsiding uh, tonight. Things quiet down. Tomorrow looks like a beautiful day and going forward, we've got some nice weather ahead. Just a few light showers, nothing that would instigate flooding temperatures in the 70s throughout the course of the week. Jason, back over to you. Bill, thanks. Let's take a look at the Sequoia Creek in Chadwick's. This is out in front of Mohawk Limited on Bleachery Place. Heavy rainfall all day. Look, it's right up against the bridge there. We've seen this before and we know where it, all that water goes down the Sequoia Creek into Whitesboro. News Channel 2's Ben Kinney live tonight from Main Street where residents and officials are closely monitoring the Sequoia Creek there. Ben, good evening. Yeah, Jason, good evening. Uh, as you said, residents and officials both monitoring this uh, throughout the day. Uh, I just checked the USGS uh, stream gauge, which is just a few miles upstream uh, towards Commercial Drive. It was at 5.9 feet. Uh, for reference, 15 minutes earlier, it was just over six feet, so it may have crested, but it did go up and down a little bit earlier. I'm going to step out of the frame so you, you could see just how, uh, how high this is running. Right now, we do know that the most flood-prone areas in the village are closed off. This includes Sequoia Street, Ellis Ave, Ablett Ave, and Elmore Drive. Uh, we heard from uh, one resident came up to us and said his backyard on Sequoia Street is underwater right now and it's starting to come into the basement. Their pumps aren't working. There's some pumps aren't working at this point because there's no power. Uh, a large portion of, uh, of the village here in Whitesboro without power, including Sequoia Street. So if folks had pumps installed, well, it's not going to do any good because there's no power in a lot of those homes. Now, there were preparations taken uh, by the uh, officials here in Whitesboro. We uh, spoke to Mayor Glenn Hopsicker a little bit earlier. Here's what he had to say. Since we got word that the storm was going to be tracking through our area, we started preparations, making sure all storm drains were ready to handle the water, all the manhole covers were clear. Um, we made sure that people could see the, the meter here at the bridge, making sure things were cleared out making sure the culverts were emptied and could handle the water flow and that there wasn't any obstructions. Again, the uh, most flood prone areas, those roads have been closed off uh, around Sequoia Street. I'm going to step out one more time just so you can see. We're probably within about two feet of, uh, of water getting to the bridge on Main Street. I'm not sure if it will or not. Of course, you got to bear in mind they had high water up in Chadwick's. Not sure if that's made its way down here yet or not, but I've definitely seen a lot of debris being carried at one point when I 
first got here, uh, an entire uh, tree that it had appeared to have uh, come down in the wind was being carried down the creek towards the railroad bridge. And I know that's been a, an issue in floods in the past with debris getting caught up there and causing uh, more issues. We're going to keep an eye on it uh, as things develop. For now, in Whitesboro, Ben Kinney, News Channel 2. Jason. All right, Ben, thank you. Uh, we're also checked in with folks in Utica. Department of Public Works have been preparing for potential flooding since Monday. DPW Commissioner Dave Short says workers have been busy clearing drainage culvers and catch basins of several areas of the city that are more prone to flooding. We know that we have quite a few areas in the city. Uh, the city's on a hill, so we have a lot of areas for potential flooding. Uh, the Parkway is one. Halleck's Ravine is another one. Uh, that's in South Utica. Uh, Lincoln Hole, that's uh, Lincoln Ave and Plant Street, Tracy. That, that usually has an issue with flooding at times. Uh, North Utica has some issues, certain locations. So um, we're keeping an eye on all of them at this point. Now Dave Short says anyone who starts to see potential flooding issues should call the DPW 315-738-1341.